Uh, my name is Joanna Wood, and um, I run, among other things, an interior design practice. Well, the funny thing about being interested in design is that I think that if you are a designer, that it's always in your psyche. And I think it's always been in part of me, part of my soul, and that perhaps I was about eight years old before I really realized that it was part of my life. But um, yeah, I mean, I was the sort of child that my mother used to come in the morning and I'd rearranged my room and the bed was in a different place and the furniture was moved all around. And, you know, I, I realized this probably sounds tragic, but I remember once asking for, you know, wallpaper for my birthday present, which certainly my peer group wasn't. So whilst I probably wasn't aware that I was interested in design, yeah, subliminally, it's always been part of me. And the very first part of any design project planning is to take a brief from the client. And whatever the client says about, oh no, you just get on with it, or we like your taste, or whatever, whatever, it's actually not true. And if you're gonna be a really good designer, the one thing you absolutely have to do is listen to your client or clients, because of course, you may well be dealing with a big family and different age kids, or uh, a granny flat, or you know, uh, an engagement, or we're planning a, to have babies soon. So there is always a brief, there is always uh, something that you need to learn from your client before you sit down. So the very, very first thing to do is to listen to your client. Don't have one. <laughs> I've never had, uh, I've never been brand led. Um, we don't actually, uh, I really would be upset if you would say, oh yes, Joanna would, she has such and such a look because my feeling is that one of the reasons that I, you know, my practice has been so lucky and so successful is that we are able to interpret lots of different styles. So, you know, at the moment we are doing two houses in Florida, which, uh, you know, one of which is very seaside and the other of which is very Palm Beach, you know, quite bright and quite fun and quite funky. Um, we're also building a house on the coast of Ireland, which is a completely different thing. Um, we're doing a very groovy penthouse. And we're doing a, you know, kind of English, uber English country house in the Cotswolds and a gorgeous cottage, which is going to be terribly rustic. So I'm probably schizophrenic. Um, it's probably something very weird about me, us, but we're able to do a Cotswolds cottage in the morning and a Florida beach house in the afternoon. And my feeling is that it keeps us fresh, it keeps us alert, it keeps us very aware of what's out there, what's on offer. Um, and I think it's very good for the practice, very good for the team. And I love it. It keeps me very enthusiastic. I think that lighting is an absolutely integral part of uh, every project we do. Uh, I, it's, I, I was going to say it's the most important part, but of course the bones and the architecture of any project, whether it's an igloo or a stately home, are really fundamentally what you work to. And I think that, uh, um, you know, Sally's story would agree with me on that. And what we, we always try and do is work to um, the project, the building we've been given. But once we've done the space planning, the very basic space planning, you know, we're gonna live here, eat here, watch television here, sleep here, uh, you know, put our makeup on here, put our babies to bed here, then the next thing we do literally is how we're going to light how we live. And we used to say we lit design, and now I say we design with light. It's absolutely a core fundamental part of everything we do. I think the combination of architectural and decorative lighting is of paramount importance because um, I am a great believer in needing lighting on all levels. So uh, I hate a room that you walk into and it's all overhead lights, low voltage, it's got no character. I mean, you or me as a human being, first of all, 
to make us happy and feel right. We need lighting on our face, above our head, on the food that we're cooking, the letter that we're writing, uh, the email that we're sending, the child that we're kissing goodnight to, and we need it at all levels. So I am a great believer in giving people a menu within their home or their work environment that they can they can operate within. I mean, you know, you just take this little office, there's about five levels of light. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's a combination. And I like to feel that the decorative lighting works if the architectural's turned off. And I also like to feel that the architectural works if the decorative's turned off. And by decorative, I think we're meaning, um, you know, standard lamps or beautiful lamps or funky, groovy chandeliers. We're installing a mobile at the moment, which has got pin spots by which you could hardly feel your way across the room. So we're lighting the light uh, and it looks fantastic. You know, it's going to look absolutely terrific. So, you know, lighting the decorative light has now become a game that we play as well. Now, when you ask about lighting controls, that's a really tricky question because um, I think a few years ago, uh, and our, our clients were asking, you know, John Callan, us, whatever, for the latest in technology. And indeed, a few people do, you know. Can I run my bath when I'm in New York and I want it run in, you know, London or something? Or can I check up on such and such? But I think there's been a bit of a sort of pushback against the complexity of these systems because it gets to the stage where if you need a kind of PhD in metaphysics just to turn the lights on and off, it's gone too far. It's become too complex. So my feeling is now that lighting controls and levels of light, the way we live, and remember that we need to integrate lighting in with smart houses. So I say running the bath flippantly, but you might well want to control your heating up or down depending on whether it's freezing cold or boiling hot or turning on the air con or whatever it might be. Um, so I think systems are necessary, but I think the move now is to try and simplify the systems that run the systems, if you see what I mean. Well, I've known and been a friend of Sally's stories now for um, probably more years than she and I can count, but it's got to be 20, and our, our um, business careers have run in, in parallel, and I've worked with her during that time, and we've done some fantastic projects together, I think I'm allowed to say. Um, and uh, I love working with her team because you, know, you build up a relationship with somebody and they, they get it. So uh, we can be working with them on restoration of an of a, of a old house one minute and uh, they will understand that the lighting's got to be very discreet, it's got to be not seen, it's got to suit a historic interior um, and that probably in that instance there are going to be more antique chandeliers, wall sconces, that kind of thing. I absolutely have to tell you, I do not have a favorite project to date. My favorite project is always going to be the one that I do next year or in five years. Time. There's, there isn't a favorite. There is never a favorite. I, uh, hopefully, I bring the same enthusiasm to every project that I do. Oh, which has been the most challenging project? Um, well, uh, there are more challenging projects and less challenging projects, but I think that we we take each project as we find it and do the best within the parameters uh, of what we're working on. It's it, uh, The things that I find difficult is if I work for a couple and their tastes are very different. So, you know, that can be quite tricky because you can't please them both all of the time or Another thing that I find very tricky, is, especially in terms of lighting, is uh, sometimes historic buildings are really hard to get contemporary services into by way of heating and lighting and electrics and air conditioning because the historic fabric's very protected. So that's quite challenging, particularly in terms of, of you know, anything other than basic sort of central chandelier lighting or wall sconces. Uh, and very often these historic houses benefit hugely from 
coffers and discrete architectural lighting. So I find those kinds of things challenging. Not, I mean, I, I once did a project that was 130,000 square feet and 91 rooms, and we had a team of 11 on it for four years. So, you know, you don't get more challenging than that, but you, you deal with the challenge in bite-sized chunks and then somehow you get through it. I think that one of the things that um, has always attracted me to the world that I live in, work in, live in, I can work sometimes a 60 hour week, no problem, and you never leave your work, um, is that it isn't always different, always. I, you know, I do not get through a day without learning something, you know, whether it's about the construction of a textile or um, an architectural detail or, you know, a new way of lighting something or LEDs now got a different bulb or there's a different floor finish available. There is never, ever a day that goes by um, where you don't find out a new fact about something. And I can truly say that I am never bored. I think that if I hadn't been an interior designer, I would have been a theatrical set designer. Um, so I love the theatre, I love the ballet. I'm always interested by the immediacy of it. If you, in a, in a way, um, theatrical design is interior design for the short term, if you see what I'm saying. Um, and I get very inspired by things like the beautiful sets at Covent Garden, for example. I was at the ballet last week and there's a new Swan Lake production and the shades of grey in the sort of swan scene are, you know, watch this space, there'll be a charcoal and white room shortly. <laughs> but otherwise, travel, you know, I'll go to Calcutta and come back and everything will be, you know, Jaipur blue or whatever. I get very inspired by seeing, oh, I don't know, spices or earth or light or anything really. Nature, certainly nature as well. Oh my goodness, if I could design a house for anyone in the world, who would it be for? Oh, I hope my husband doesn't see this. <laughs> um, I'm not sure, actually. I'll tell you the one thing that I really would like to design, if anyone out there is listening, is the one thing I haven't done is a train. And so I'd love to work on one of those luxury trains. I think that uh, the idea of kind of rolling stock being really luxurious, you know, like the blue train or one of those, the, um, uh, the Venice Express, you know, the, um, what's it called? I've lost my, Orient Express, that's right. I think, you know, one of those luxury trains that, that by the way, that is on my bucket list of things I want to design. Otherwise, a particular person, well, there's lots of fun people. I mean, I've got a list of fun people right now um, that I'm working for. What products do I particularly like at the moment? I very much like layering texture upon texture. So um, I, I don't normally pick out one thing. I will work to layer a silk and a linen and a velour and um, a weave and a pattern. I, you know, you won't find a room done by me that's all silk, for example, because it devalues. I, I, I'm very much into layering. Um, at the moment, I like, uh, we're using a lot of textured wool coverings. Um, I like, um, I'm going back into antique furniture in a very discerning, you know, like mid-century if it's really, really good. And uh, whisper, whisper, I'm quite getting into 17th century oak which hasn't been around since I was a child. But just the odd, really beautiful piece I'm quite into. Beautiful lights, quite like commissioning, wonderful lighting. Um, and um, I'm into lots of rugs, wooden flooring. Oh, there's so many things I'm into. How long have you got? I think trends are, to ask me what I feel that the trends are is a very interesting question because Firstly, I think trending now happens quite quickly. We're all into grass green or we're all into aqua or we're all into a photographic wall or whatever. And then it can go away quite quickly. I mean, it's almost, 
I never know whether we're leading fashion or fashion's leading us, but it, you know, it can move together. And I, I always say to clients, beware of that. Don't suddenly find that you're stuck with something that's cost you a fortune that three years later you're going, oh my God, why did I do that? You know, so my advice is to sort of accessorize and follow trends in a more immediate way, um, su more superficially really. Um, mm. I think that what I like about now is that the design world is so broad that you can design on all sorts of different levels for different people and uh, you'd be on trend on, on something contemporary, something antique and something in the middle. Yeah, we use John Cullen products a lot and we, we, we use them when we're not necessarily working with the team on design. I mean, they're very much a go-to um, and a lot of their inset lighting is extremely nice and we particularly like their exterior lights. You know, they invented the up-down light and it's still the nicest and the best and their, their spots and uh, their full range of exterior is well worth looking at actually, I have to say. And one of the things that I would say is particularly good about John Cullen is that they are continually researching. There's always something new in the product line, so we're always hearing, you know, they've modified this or they've just added that or whatever. And it's always interesting. They're always, they're always ahead of the game. Very good. Well, there's lots of exciting things that I'm working on. Some I can tell you and some I can't, but we are in the middle of doing um, Winfield House in Regent's Park, which is the very beautiful residence uh, for the ambassador to the Court of St. James's from the US. And it is the most extraordinarily beautiful house, uh, which sits in 17 acres of garden. And when you think the Buckingham Palace is 11 acres, it is vast it's absolutely stunning so um, we've been working on that since the new ambassador arrived at the end of last year so it's been pretty fast track and pretty hands-on but it's it's a very nice and very exciting job we're thrilled to be working on it oh a large glass of wine and a good dinner at the end of the day um, and and a soft pillow and my family and friends who could ask for more really